Okay. Was she sad when the band came to an end? Um, no, it's bittersweet. Is it? Yeah, no, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm relieved. Was there any particular point um, where you thought this is, uh, this is the end of the group, even in, you know, your own head? Um, yeah, it was coming. I mean, I kind of kept thinking to myself, well, obviously I thought it might be over after the first album, that long gap. And then kind of when everyone thought it was definitely over, I kind of wanted it to not be over for spite, because mm. that's the kind of girl I am. And then I think the whole second record thing, I felt like um, I was only going to do it if, if it felt really good. And it, it did feel good, but it didn't feel good enough. Is that one of the strange things, that uh, Elastica was great when it was fun? Well, I mean, I think it's like any band, it's great when it's fun. I mean, it, and it was really fun. I mean, it, it, it was really fun the second time round. And it was really fun in the beginning and the first time around. The last session in the studio, we knew we were going to break up and we were like, you know, just enjoy it. Is that why, is that why it sounds like everyone's hitting their guitars extra hard? Yeah, because we can afford to break them. <laughs> we'll have to buy another one. And um, what have you been up to since? I spent a bit of time travelling, actually, with, with my little 505 groove box. And um, I, was, I went travelling in South America and up through the Grenadines um, at the beginning of the year. And um, I was on my own. I've never been travelling on my own before. And it was really amazing because I, I didn't get lonely for other people, but I got lonely for other musicians. Mm. And ended up walking into, like, church halls with soca rehearsals going on with my, with my electric guitar saying, can I help? And kind of grabbing blind black men off the street who were kind of warbling away and saying, gra dragging them back to where I was staying and trying to sit onto my four track and stuff. The busker's best friend. Yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll give you a session for you if you come home with me. No, yeah, really, exactly. honestly. No, sort of Miss Desperate. But, um, no, it was, it was kind of interesting doing that and I spent a few months in New York this year, mm. which was really quite inspiring. So as you were going around, did you did you actually, you know, did you record bits and pieces? Yeah, I recorded yeah. quite a lot on my little four track. Yeah. And then uh, New York. Uh-huh. Back to the hustle and bustle then. Yeah, I mean, I was just interested to see whether it really was better than London. Mm. at the moment and um and what's your conclusion I, I decided it wasn't no no i think london's better do you anticipate doing uh, anything else or collaborating with other people yeah i did a thing with um. british meat scene which was basically primal scream without bob and innis um and that was really fun to do and i've been i've been doing vocals for other people's records which has been fun have you yeah <laughs> you never tell me who will you who well i've been working with a band called pleasure for pleasure um, who are kind of new. He just sent, sent me a demo and said, do you want to sing on it? I was like, yeah. British American? Well, actually Norwegian, but living in London. Right. Guys, Norwegian. And um, bits and pieces, hopefully doing some stuff for the away team at some point. And when are we going to see you back? Never. You're a liar, but you're a lovely <laughs> girl. Justine, thank you very much. Thanks, Steve.